Welcome back to the 49th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one we're going to carry on developing the home page so that our post form is a little bit more perhaps usable because in the last video we finished with this home page and it's got a post form and we can enter data into it and when we press submit that sends a post request to the web server and then it, we get redirected so it does a get request uh, as per our view and then we see the updated uh, object that we just added to that uh, post model using our Django model form to the end of this list. Now what would be nice is uh, for, for this to be in the correct order and I think a good way of ordering that would be by the date on the actual object itself. So in this video I'm going to talk a bit about the actual dates themselves and the date time fields on the Django model and how you can use them. So let's carry on with this post model and I'm going to make a few changes here so in the last video I sort of said that uh, this date field was supposed to be uh, just just an initial timestamp so when you add the post uh, it's just going to sort of uh, clarify a, a date on that object and then that date will be preserved like a timestamp in other words so I call that a sort of like a created field so I'm going to re rename that so it's a little bit more appropriate and actually I made a slight mistake here, it shouldn't be auto now I put this in the description as a correction I should have said auto now add so auto now add is the one that uh, will date the object on creation but then not on subsequent saves what I'm also going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this and then that way I can add an updated uh, date time field as well and that's just going to be auto now equals true so that can be updated if say for example in the future we wanted to allow users to edit these posts after they've been made we add an edit button with some JavaScript for example we could edit the text here press save and then uh, we could use the updated field uh, to have the date that it was updated as opposed to the date that it was created so I'm not sure if we're going to do that, but maybe at some point it'd be nice to have that uh, knowledge of the uh, post being updated if we sort of choose to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go to the view, and at the moment you can see to use the uh, post objects in that model, at the moment we're just doing post.objects.all. Get all the objects out of the database, uh, no matter when they were created or who, who made them or anything like that. And for this home page, I think it's actually better that we don't filter by, for example, user, because on this home page we want to see the posts by all the users across the uh, network itself. Uh, but what I want to do is I do want to sort of reorder this list. So I can show you a couple of methods to do with the date time field in Django that you may not necessarily be aware of. So firstly, to do this uh, filter, or or I'm not going to filter it as such, I'm just going to order the objects. So, I mean, I could do objects.filter if I did want to filter it, but I'm just going to do with the an existing uh, query set that we have at the moment, in other words, the list of objects, the uh, order I want, so I'm going to say dot order by, and then I'm going to say date. So, you may have seen this before in a previous video, but just to go over that, uh, sorry, we, we just renamed the date to uh, created. So I'm going to say created instead. Uh, if I refresh that, wait for the development server to update. Uh, so now we need to run the migration because the model has been changed but we haven't actually applied it. So we can do Django admin uh, make migration, just like always. And, sorry, make migrations, plural and I can say did I rename date to updated? Uh, yes. Uh, do I want to provide a default? Uh, it's asking me this because I've already got objects in the database and I haven't set a default. So I can say number one, I, I do want to do that and let's say so you can accept the default times zero dot now by pressing enter so that's fine I just press enter so it's set the default for me. Uh, if this was uh, a different field type, it may not give you a default like that, but say if it was an integer field, you could just type one and then press enter. But now we've done that, we can apply the migration and I can say Django admin migrate. So I 
don't bother specifying the particular app because we've only got that particular migration to apply anyway. If you worked in a large Django project with lots of make, uh, migrations being made by the first command, then you may want to specify the app which you want the migrations uh, to actually apply to. Uh, but now that that's done, we can we should be able to see the next error if uh, I've broken something else, or hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to run the Django development server as I forget to do in almost every video, and refresh. So now we've got uh, got it working at least, so I can try to post it. Now it looks like it's working, except that we can't see the date anymore, and that's probably because we've changed the field from date to uh, created, and I want to, I, well I need to rename it where we're sort of referring to the old name. So that's probably in the templates, and I've got post.date, so I can change that to created, and that should then allow me to see the date if I refresh. So now we've got that, but it's in the wrong order, so it's, it's sort of doing it from the oldest to the newest. And because I want that the other way around, I can do uh, minus created, so just like that, or negative created, and that should, where's the uh, service refreshed, uh, flip the order. So now we have the newest one at the top. If I add another one, then we can see that gets added to the top as well, and everything else gets sort of shunted down. So that's really nice because we can see the latest post right at the top. Now that we've done that, as a little bonus, I want to show you the couple of methods that I, I mentioned a little bit earlier that you may not necessarily have seen when you're talking about the date time field in Django because they're probably less commonly used, I would say, than the, the order by and the filtering and, and the stuff that we're doing in the view sort of here to retrieve the actual objects themselves. Uh, because they sort of have a more specific use case, I guess you could say. So to demonstrate, I'm just going to do Django admin shell, and I'm going to import uh, from home.models import post. So the model that we uh, are using uh, to get these objects out of, and I could do post.objects.all to see uh, what I'm doing in my project at the moment, and so that's getting all of these objects. And you can see it just says post, which is the type of uh, model that, well, what we call the model, and the fact that it's a post object. But what we can do if we say, if we select one of them, for example, uh, the object index one, uh, so now we have a specific one. Uh, if we do dot post, uh, I think that's why we call the field. So this is the. Uh, the second object in the in the list at the moment, and it has this value in the, in the post. But if I wanted to get the next one by the actual date itself, I can do on that object. Now, what I could do is if I just stick this in a variable called post for now. So this is the first post object that we're going to use for an example. We have uh, sorry, I should store the object there rather than the actual string. So if, if I say post, that will give us the object again. I just put that in a variable. But what I can do is I can get the next or previous object related to that object specifically by the date. So I could say something like post dot get uh, next by the name of the field itself. So in this case, get next by the created date. And then if I run that, we get an object and if I do dot post to see the contents of that post, uh, we get the next object. So if you look, uh, so that was that. If we look for this in our list of objects, uh, you can see, uh, where was that then? That was this one here, and that was created uh, February 12th. And here you can see get next by created. So that's looking down to the next object here. Uh, in this order uh, to the next object. If you wanted to get the previous object, there's also a method for that. So you could do get previous previous by by created, and now you can see we get the uh, this post here. So this was the one that we had originally, and you can sort of traverse this list of objects by saying I want the next one or I want the previous one as opposed to perhaps having to search through 
you know, the whole list to find exactly what you want. You know, if you just want one either way, then this is a handy way of just finding, okay, I want the last post that was made before the current post that I have, for example. This is a handy method to be able to do that. And of course the same will work if I used the other field, so I could say updated, and that would get a post, and if I say get next, uh, that will also get the other post itself. Now at the moment these dates are the same, so the results would be the same, but this can work for any date time field. So you just have to specify the name uh, of that field within the method itself, which is sort of kind of unusual, but that's the way it works. In the next one then, we're going to carry on working on the home page.